Hey everyone, today I want to show you the tools or the software that I personally use almost every day in my work as a Shopify developer. Um, but I'm not only doing development tasks, I'm doing a lot of various things that not only developers do, but store owners and other types of freelancers as well. So I'm hoping that this video will be beneficial to anyone who works on Shopify stores. I'll be showing you exactly how I use these tools and my favorite features of each tool. So let's get started. All right, so the first tool that I have to show you is VS Code. This is probably the most popular code editor right now. Um, if you haven't heard of a code editor at all, then basically it's like the Microsoft Word of web development. You need a editor in which you can write code, in which you know your code is highlighted in these different colors that makes it easy to read. You can minimize blocks of code like this. We also have some plugins for auto completion. So for example, I can write this and I write image and you know I'm writing my HTML a lot faster than I would otherwise. You can also see all of like the files inside the entire project that you added in here, right? And that's also really useful because you can search the entire project for a certain phrase, a bit of CSS or really anything. So let's say that you want to know where in your uh, theme is the code for the add to cart button, right? So we're going to inspect this in Chrome inspector and uh, let's look for product form buttons, right? This is the div that contains the uh, add to cart button and stuff. And so we would go into search here and paste that in. And then we can immediately see that there is a snippet called buy buttons .liquid, And that's what contains that div. So immediately I'm here immediately, I know what to edit if I want to change something inside of this. However, the usefulness of a code editor goes beyond just um, web development. Here's another editor that I use for simpler tasks called Sublime Text. And I like it, it's just a bit more lightweight and a bit snappier on Mac. So I actually used this just earlier today because I had a list of URLs that I needed to change uh, because I was creating redirects. What I need to do just to this entire list is change it to this basically slash collection slash baby accessories. And I also want to replace the ampersand and stuff. This is a very trivial thing, but um, I just want to show you how much faster it can be in a code editor. I'm using command D here to select everything. And now I have this multi cursor, right? So I'm going to replace that with a dash and we're pretty much done. I need to get rid of these ampersands and the dash because we, we got coats, jackets now, toys, games. That's the new URLs. So everywhere where these occur, I press command D and it finds all of those occurrences. And I'm going to get rid of that. You can also highlight everything and command shift L. And now we have a cursor on every single line. We can go to the start to the end. You know, basically it, it's, it's a really useful uh, tool for jumping around on a lot of text and doing these mass edits. And guys, a, a code editor is very easy to use. Don't be intimidated by it. All you do is download it. It's free. And then you just download the theme file from Shopify, unzip it so that you have a folder like this with, you know, sections, templates and all of that stuff. And then you just drag it on to your code editor and it opens that entire project inside of the code editor. And you can look through your files, look through your code and all of that stuff. Now as for actually connecting to your Shopify store so that when you make changes here and you save that gets uploaded to your store, that's a little bit more complicated. Um, you need to have an understanding of like the terminal and it depends if you're on Windows or Mac. So I, I don't really recommend getting into that too much. Rather just use this as a way to read your code to find the things that you need to change. Uh, and then you can go into your main code editor in Shopify and find that file and make the changes that you want or just use this for those mass text edits as I mentioned before. All right, moving on. And the next biggest thing that I use every day is Notion. This keeps track of my entire life. You've probably heard of Notion already, so I won't talk about it too much. But basically, if you haven't, it's like a note taking app slash to do list app slash database and calendar. Um, I just use it for very simple things like a to do list, you know, um, so you get these check boxes here. You can create drop downs for notes. You can create drop downs within drop downs. So, you know, I, I like using my keyboard as well. I'm a very 
keyboard user person. And so I, I love the fact that it's so fast to do this stuff without any kind of clicking. And I use it, of course, for code blocks. So we can um, be working on something. And then if I want to make a tutorial, if I want to make a blog post or a digital product, I would use the code blocks here. And then for my digital products, actually, for my digital products, I create a file like this with a banner, you know, a little image, so it looks good. I chuck the code in here, you know, and we have these steps. I format it nicely so it's nice to, you know, read. And then you can actually export everything as a PDF um, or you can share it online so we can copy the web link and then anyone can open this web link. So it's almost like a, a really easy way to share like information, files and stuff. And when I update this file here in Notion, this actually gets updated on this live web version as well. So yeah, that's enough about Notion, I think. Obviously, it's just a very useful tool and anyone that does digital work will benefit from it. So highly recommend it. Next, we have ChatGPT. I know that this has been like so overhyped on the internet, but yes, I do actually use it and I pay for the plus version so that I can get GPT-4, which I think works a lot better. So here's an example of something I use it for a lot, and that's just debugging CSS or any kind of code. Uh, sometimes I just don't remember about some basic things that I need to be reminded of. And this is a way that I can simply brainstorm with someone. I explain my problem in just like two sentences and it will remind me of this thing that immediately solves my problem. Another task that it's really useful for is creating rich snippet schema. So if you're not familiar with what rich snippets or, or, or rich data is in Google, uh, it's when, you know, you get these, uh, Often it's recipes or products that have some kind of additional data around them. In this case, it's these review stars, how long it took it takes, the calories and things like that. For Shopify, it'll be like your product reviews, the price, and uh, sometimes extra information for blog posts. So I have a blog. Sometimes when I do these posts that are very much like answering questions, then I like to use the FAQ schema. And the FAQ schema is in a question and answer format. And it just gives Google that a bit of extra data and helps your page rank. So what I do with ChatGPT is it helps me create the code that I need to include in my blog post. So I'm just going to paste all of my questions and answers into here. And I say, generate a uh, JSON LD FAQ schema for the above text. Okay. And let's see if that works. Here's the JSON LD FAQ schema for the above text. And it marks it all up in the correct JSON format, right? So we have a question, the name, like that's the actual question, and then the answer text. And then basically we would copy this code when it finishes, of course, we would copy this code. And if you're on a Shopify site, um, just go to your blog, you know, you have, you're, you're writing a blog here, switch to HTML mode, and then you can paste in the, uh, the code at the bottom of the post. And that's a really quick and easy way to just get a little bit better ranking for your blog posts on Google. And ChatGPT makes this a whole lot easier. All right, now getting back to the more technical stuff, Next, we have CodePen, and this is a tool that I love to use for really quick um, HTML and CSS projects, right? Not really projects, more like tiny little features that I add using the custom liquid block in Shopify. I think most of you know what I'm talking about when I say custom liquid block. I'm talking about this little block that you have where you can write any kind of code that you want, custom liquid. And I often use it for something like this pulsing in stock icon. So I would first write my code here in CodePen so that I can immediately see it. You know, it's a lot easier to use than this editor here. This editor doesn't have code highlighting. The, the lines break onto the, onto the next line. They wrap around. It's just, it's not comfortable to work here. And so I would first write my code in CodePen and then I copy and paste it into here. Make sure that we wrap this in a style block. The CSS can't just be pasted in like that. It needs to be inside the HTML style tags. And now we should have this little in stock pulsating icon here. Code pen is free. You don't even need an account. All you do is create a new pen. And here we can start coding. 
Next up we have Pixlr.com. This one is really easy to explain. It's exactly like Photoshop, except it's online and it's free, which is awesome. I don't really like Adobe. I don't like Adobe products. I think they don't work well and they're overpriced. Anyway, clicking to start photo editing, you can open any image and then you have this editor, which is exactly, well, not exactly, but very similar to Photoshop. And for Shopify, it's very simple things, right? I mostly just need to crop, right? I mostly just need the crop tool um, and that's pretty much it. Sometimes I need to fill in a background or something like that. Sometimes I need to cut something out. Cropping and resizing is mostly what I need it for. I highly recommend Pixlr as an alternative to Photoshop. And the next little thing that I'll mention, it's also related to image editing, but basically it's called squish.app. It's built by the developers at Google and it's an image compressor. And all you do is drag an image into here from your files. I'll do this with one of my YouTube thumbnails, actually. I always do this with my YouTube thumbnails. Um, and you can see how much of a saving it makes. So the original file, because it's a very big file, large resolution. It was 1.69 megabytes and then it compresses it down by 90% to 170 kilobytes, which is huge. And I also like to use this to resize. So for YouTube, I need 1400. I mean, obviously it'll be different for Shopify, but that compresses it even further. So we went from 1.69 megabytes to just 74 kilobytes. And you can do this with other tools like Tiny PNG. Tiny PNG is for bulk compression. Um, so like you can drop 20 images in here and it'll compress all of them. But I actually like using Squoosh because I can change the level of quality and I can change like resize each image. You know, it lets you do each image one by one and it lets you preview how that actually affects the image. So highly recommend Squoosh to keep your images lightweight before uploading them to Shopify. Next up, we have GitHub Desktop. I honestly wasn't sure if I should include this in this video, because if you're a developer, you're already using this. And if you're not a developer, it's unlikely that you're ever going to use this, because to be honest, it's a bit too technical. It's kind of a serious developer tool. Um, but I thought that I would explain it anyway, so that you understand what's going on, like how developers work. And this might benefit you if you work with a developer in future. So basically, if you're familiar with computer games, or if you played computer games back in the 2000s, you had save points, right? You would save the game manually. And if you forgot to save the game, then you might lose the progress that you had in the game. So um, version control or Git is very similar in that it allows you to save the changes that you made. And then you can compare those changes to the previous version of your project. So for example, here we can see that I changed main product.liquid and these are the lines that I deleted. These are the lines that I added and we can just scroll throughout the file. Maybe this is a better example. We can scroll throughout the file and see the exact changes that I made to the code. And this is just one file, but you can see in some of these that uh, you have these for multiple files and you have this entire version history and you can go all the way back to the start of the project. So this is a very useful tool that you just can't live without as a developer. Um, and any developer that you work with on a Shopify store will be using this, any professional developer will be using this and they will have an entire history of all the work that they did on your project and they'll be able to easily roll back to a previous version. Finally, I wanna talk about the themes that I prefer to use. I know that this isn't exactly a tool, but sometimes when I know that I'm gonna to have to do certain development work or lots of modifications to a client's project, I know that I need a theme that's easier to work with. And I prefer themes that are from these companies out of the sandbox or pixel union or archetype themes. Now these companies have been around for a long time, particularly out of the sandbox and pixel union have a lot of classic themes that have been used on thousands of stores. They're probably maybe the leading themes. I'm not sure about the statistics, but I'm sure you must have heard of turbo theme, flex theme, superstore, uh, retina. And then from pixel union, we have things like empire, Pacific and Atlantic startup. Um, these are very, 
popular, very widely used themes. So they're tried and tested. Their code is easy to work with and they have various comments in them letting you know uh, exactly how you should modify them, you know, they're just built in a very logical way that's easy to work with. And also these themes out of the sandbox and Pixel Union come with the theme updater app, which means that even though you buy them off these sites, download them and add them to your store, you'll still be able to automatically update them using this app and your settings, all the customizations you made will be carried across to the newer version of the theme, actually archetype themes as well. Sorry, my mistake. Theme updater is for all three of these companies. So if you are looking for a new theme, then I definitely recommend checking out themes by Out of the Sandbox, Pixel Union, or Archetype. For these first two, I have a discount code. You can get 10% off by using my code FAST10, and you'll also be supporting this channel. I'll get a small commission from that. Um, for this third one, I don't have a discount code, unfortunately, but I still recommend their themes, particularly Impulse. And that's it for today's video. I hope you found it useful. If you're interested in what other tools I recommend, check out the tools page on my website. Here I recommend some Shopify apps, some different themes that I like, and other software that I use for other parts of my online business, like my newsletter. And speaking of my newsletter, you should sign up. It's just once a month. I do a quick summary of any Shopify news and any tutorials that I've released. Leave a comment if you have any questions. If you want me to do a similar video, let me know and I'll see you next time. Bye.